Hello, and welcome to ITC TechShare. I'm Tom Grissom. In this episode, I'd like to share a few tips and tricks about using the Smart Notebook version 10 software. To begin, let's double click on the icon on the desktop labeled Smart Notebook 10. This opens the notebook software. Let me close this out because you may or may not have a shortcut available to you on the desktop. If you do not, you can always get to the Smart Notebook software by going down to the Windows Start button, choosing All Programs, and then scrolling down to the Smart Technologies folder, and then opening the Smart Notebook folder, and there you will see the Smart Notebook 10 program. Now that's a lot of steps, which is why most people make a shortcut on the desktop. If you don't have one and you'd like to create a shortcut, it's very easy. While you have your mouse on the Smart Notebook 10 program, if you right-click, that brings up the Properties menu, and one of those choices is Send To. So I'm going to send this to the desktop. It says Create Shortcut. Now it looks like nothing happened, but if I click off of here, you will see that now I have a second Smart Notebook version 10 icon. Now, I don't need two of them on the desktop, so I'm just going to throw that one away. I was just demonstrating how to make a shortcut. So that was a second way to start Smart Notebook. A third way in the Task Manager, down on the bottom on your taskbar, this little triangle that says Show Hidden Icons. If you click once on that, you will see the Smart Notebook icon. So I can click on that once, and it brings me up a pop-up menu of different choices that I may do with a Smart Notebook program. So the very top one, it says Notebook. If I click on that, that opens up the Smart Notebook program. So there's three different ways that you can open the Smart Notebook software. Now in this example today, I thought I'd just uh, put together some common questions that I get about using objects on the Smart Board. So let's say that I want to create a little uh, neighborhood scene uh, for, for an, a lesson plan that I'm doing. So I'm going to go to the gallery options here. In a previous episode, we talked about gallery essentials. And I want to find a picture of a house. Well, I could click on Gallery Essentials and go down through here and try guessing what category a house may be. But I also have a search box, which is very handy, so we might as well take advantage of that. Let's type the word house, click on search, and then in the lower pane, it breaks out the three different categories that I have. One of those is pictures, and it looks like it found 56 pictures related to house. Click on this triangle to expand the choices, and you will see the different clip art available related to house. So scroll down, find one that you like. I like this one here, so I'm just going to drag that from the left to the right. And there is an object of the house. Now I can make it larger or smaller. Let's bring that down. Let's make it about that size right there. Now, since this is a house, we have a yard around here. Maybe we want to add a few trees. So I'm going to go back up to my search menu, search for the word tree, Go to my pictures category here and expand this and find a tree. Christmas tree? No, I don't want that. So let's go on down. Here's one. I like this one, so I'm just going to grab this and put it over to the side. All right. Now then, maybe I want more than one tree. I could grab another tree and drag it over. Or oftentimes, teachers want to have an object to repeat it multiple times. And it's very easy to do with the Smart Notebook program. Click on the little triangle on the properties, and you'll see the very first choice that says Clone. So if I press Clone, it makes an identical copy of whatever object that was, in this case, a tree. So now then, I have a picture of a tree. I can move that over here, move that around, resize the tree, whatever I'd like to do. Let's resize this one. And let's go back, make sure I... Let me put the tree there. Now, I'm going to put this here, but I, what I would really like to do is kind of have a layered effect here. And I want this tree to be behind the house. Right now, it looks like it's growing out of the side of the house, so that doesn't look very natural. So I'm going to select this tree icon and layer it or send it to the back. With that selected, choose the triangle and scroll down to where you find the word order. So under order, I could bring that to the front, send it to the back, bring forward, or send back. I'm going to send that to the back. And whenever I do that, you'll notice now that that tree is now behind the house. So that's like a layered effect that you can do here. So we can do this here, like the little tree setting off to the side of the house. So we've got that. We've got a little tree here in the front yard. Um, let's say that we want to have, add some animation. So maybe we've got a street out in front of this house, and we want to have a car um, drive from the left to the right. So let's, uh, I, want, I need to make a road, so probably the quickest way to do that, just off the top of my head, would be to grab the square tool here. 
and let's make a rectangle. So down here in front of the house, I'm going to go out here, click, hold, and drag, and make a rectangle near the bottom here, and let go of that. So now I have a square area. Then I'm going to go back to my select tool, select the square area, find my little properties triangle up here, click on this, and I'm going to go down to the properties of this square. And one of the things that I can do is change the fill effects. Since this is a road, I'm going to use a solid fill, and let's do something a little bit darker gray. So there's like gray asphalt in front. Now then, I also want to add, I also want to add a striped line. Maybe I want to have a divided highway here. So I'm going to make a line, so I'm going to choose my line tool here. Since I want a striped line, I'm going to choose the dashed arrow here in this case. And I can go to line style, and I can choose whatever color. I'm going to use a yellow line here in this case, and I can change the thickness of that line. So I'll choose this size thickness. Now then I'm going to draw from the left to the right, and there's my divided highway. Very quickly I can do that. Now that's not quite in the center, so I'm going to go back to my select tool. Looks like I need to raise that up just a little bit. Get that kind of by eye here where you'd like. So. Let me call that good right there. I'll let that go. Now, if I move this object, that gray is moving independently of the line behind it. So I'm going to use something called the group feature to take care of that problem. Let's get this back about where I would like here. All right, so I've got that taken care of. So I'm going to choose this line, and I'm going to choose the square behind it. Now, the way that I selected both of those, I was pressing the control key down when I selected the line and the control key there. Since both of those are now highlighted, I'm going to use the group feature. If you use the properties pull down here, I can go up to something called grouping. And the shortcut it says is control G. So now then, I've grouped that dashed line together with the gray background in this case. So now whenever I move this around, the line moves with the, with the gray road in this case. So got that taken care of. Now I need to go find a picture of a car. So let's go back to the gallery tab, go to our search box and type in car, and click on search, and finds 227 pictures with part of the word car. And you can see it's got a lot of the cards in there. So that's probably why we have so many different choices. Let's use this Austin Ruby, this old style car here. So let's drag it down on the road here. Now I want that to go from the left to the right. So right now, if I go from the left to the right, the car is going backwards. We need to take care of that first. So let's go to the little pull down triangle and we're going to use the flip function. We're going to say flip this left to right. So now then it's facing the right way. I'm going to position the car here all the way over to the right hand side. And then once I have that car selected, I'm going to use the pull down menu and I'm going to go to properties and now then back over here you will notice I have fill effects the second choice is object animation so just like in PowerPoint where you can have objects fly in fly out and do different animations we can do some basic animations here so let's have this car fly in from the left we can do slow normal or fast let's do normal speed and we can say this occurs when the page is clicked or we could say when the page is entered. Let's go through and say OK there. And let's go back to page sorter view. So now then I've got that taken care of. So whenever I click on the item here, the car flies in. Now I've got that where that's scrolling down just a little bit. So I've got some issues here I need to take care of. And this is common. Things don't always go the way that you want to the first time. So we need to move this road up just a little bit and move the car up just a little bit. And now then, let's go back to page sorter view. So now then, whenever I click on the page, there we go. Whenever the page is clicked or click on the car, I can make the car fly in when the object is clicked. Now that's going a little bit fast, so maybe I need to go back to my properties go back to my object animation and change my speed to slow here. There we go. That way all the children can see the, the car coming in here. We'll move that down on this side of the road here. So now then we've got our 
little item here. Click on this, and here comes the car in. There we go. So just a real quick little animation there on what you can do. So on this episode, we talked a little bit about grouping. We talked about cloning. We talked about flipping. We talked about how to order things. Uh, let's go back up. A uh, common thing that teachers do, uh, say that we want to make a star for each one of the students. So if I come up here, let's make a new page. Let's say I want to make a star, and I want to have one star for every student. If I click on the star, select it, I could click like 25 times or whatever, but if I know the shortcut, Control D, let's say that I want to make 10 stars. All right, I could click that like nine more times, or with, that, with the star selected, I could press Control D. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there we've got all of our stars in there very quickly. And all I was doing was pressing the Control and the D, letting off the D, press Control D again, and so forth. And that's very, a very quick way. Now, if I don't want all of those stars, let's say I want to get delete all of those, what I could do is draw a selection box around all of those and then click the red X. So that's kind of handy if you want to clone multiple items. Let's go back to the original page here. And once again, whenever I click on the car, you see the animation go in. So that's just a few tips and tricks on how to layer, animate the objects, change the order, change the grouping, and so forth. Until next time, this is Tom Grissom. Keep on learning.